In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add a fade to your slide level audio, your background audio, and your object level audio. Okay, let's get started here. So, I got a message from Sheba Day, and Sheba asks, Thanks for your videos. I can't seem to use the fade in and fade out feature for audio on slide Captivate 7. How can I make my audio file fade out as the slide comes to an end? So Shiva, this is a, an interesting thing. Sometimes what happens with uh, software over time is that as they add features and take features away and modify things, things can sometimes go out of whack a little bit. And I think this is one of the cases there. Uh, there are three types of audio uh, that you can import into, um, or I should say, uh, there's really one type of audio you can import, and you can use it three different ways within Adobe Captivate. So let's start off with just a basic project here. In fact, we'll just do a, a basic responsive design project. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just quickly cover off uh, what those uh, different types of audio uh, types are or situations where you would use audio. I'm just going to have a completely blank slide, nothing confusing at all. This is a three second slide here. And of course, you have the opportunity, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. You can record your narration directly or you can import it. I like using the audio drop down menu because all of your options are there. So let's say, for example, I'm not recording, but rather importing um, audio in. There are three choices, and those are object level audio. In other words, audio that's attached to, say, a smart shape or a text box or even a button, perhaps. Um, I don't think I've ever done audio to a button, but we'll, we'll see. And uh, there's slide level audio, and this is probably the most common because uh, most people are importing some type of narration. And if you like a little background music throughout the entire course or, or across multiple slides, you can import background audio as well. Now, interesting enough, this presents a different interface for each of these, and that's where I'm talking about uh, the disparity between these, these three. So let's first of all show you object level audio. And I'm just going to bring in a basic rectangle, nothing fancy. And uh, you'll notice that in your properties panel, you have uh, add audio right here. Uh, so if I click on add audio, I can then go either to my library or import an audio file. I happen to have this short little funk down track here. And we'll import that in. And you can see that the edit and uh, add replace uh, dialog box, pretty straightforward. I can adjust volume. I can insert silence. There's a lot of things that I can, I can cut and I can paste. I can delete. I can adjust the volume. I can even round trip this with Adobe Audition if you happen to have that installed. But interestingly enough, let's just hit save. Uh, one of the things it's prompting me for is to extend the, di the display time of this object uh, and subsequently the slide to 8.9 seconds to match the audio. Yes, we're going to do that. And we'll hit close. So at object level audio, you have a fade in and fade out option here. So I could say, well, let's fade in for three seconds and let's fade out for three seconds. Uh, that's not going to leave very much time, but you get the idea. So this will uh, this will play, and this will allow you to fade in the song, play the song, and then fade it out once it's done. You can always, of course, if you wanted to hide the object and not make it visible, just go into the style, make it you know 100% transparent, make sure there's no stroke around the outside, and then while you'll still see the the stroke color at uh, on your stage, the users won't see this at all, but they will hear the audio with a fade in and a fade out. Let's go back to the other types for a moment here. If I go into the audio drop-down uh, menu and I select slide level audio, 
I have the option again to select that same audio file. I'm going to click open. And you'll see it now down in your timeline as a waveform. And of course, it's going to stretch out the duration of the slide if it needs to. Let me double click on that and show you the interface here. Um, at this stage, of course, uh, there's all these controls here. Um, the edit window is fairly similar. And of course, I can do cut, paste, delete, all that stuff. And of course, now you'll see under the options panel, with nothing selected other than the slide itself, you'll see fade in and fade out. And of course, you even have the opportunity to loop the audio if you wish. So those are the options there. Let me delete this again, or remove in this case. And I'm just going to insert background audio just to show you the difference there. This is fairly common as well if you like to add a little background music just to spice up your project a little bit here. So a little bit different because it's there's no slide level audio, those fade out and fade in controls are not available on the slide level properties panel. Instead, they'll actually be located within the background audio window itself. So I can add three second fade in, and a three second fade out or, or whatever length you require. And of course, all the other adjustments are available as well. Once I hit save and then close, you won't see it on the timeline because it's not part of the slide. It's strictly in the background of the course itself. So those are the three different types of audio. And those are the three different types of ways that you would add a fade in or fade out or both. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.